Tamara says, Hi Dutch, love the show. I have a question about bookers and WCW during your run there. What did you think of Magnum TA as a booker? I think he was co-booker at the time. And did you ever have any run-ins with George Scott? Thank you. I never had any run-ins with George Scott. Really never worked for him, really. I was scheduled to go into North Carolina, and I forgot what happened. Something happened, and I was I was booked there, and I just never went for some reason. That's very unlike me, but I I just turned and went back home. I was, I was living in actually I was living in Murfreesboro. What we was talking about now, I just went back home. As far as Magnum T A as a booker. I don't think he was the booker booker. I think when he came back from that horrific accident that he was in, I think Dusty put him in a spot. He was like assistant booker, wasn't he, or something? Assistant booker, which is he just, I don't know how many ideas he came up with. He may have come up with several. I don't know. But I think he was just there uh, kind of helping out. And like backing up Dusty on what what he thought about certain things, and as a as any individual contributions, I don't know what he made because I wasn't in there, but uh, but he had been around the business enough, I think, by that time, even though he was still green, and uh, for him to even get a Booker's job at that age was kind of was kind of unheard of. Because usually bookers were like in their late 40s, maybe in 50s, because they had seen a lot, done a lot, and dealt with a lot of the the very same wrestlers they were booking at that time. So bookers usually got the job uh, after they were through working or close to getting through working, except for Dusty. Dusty... He booked uh, a lot of the, the uh, Mid Atlantic, uh, the Carolina territories, uh, and from what I hear, this is what I've heard. Uh, Dusty, he did. He just booked the main events. You know, he just decided what he wanted to do with the main events, and that's why Dusty, if the rock and roll was on top and they were hot as fire, uh, Ricky Morton told me this. Well, Dusty would book himself in a six-man. So now Dusty is the main event in a six-man. And if uh, Nikita Koloff, that was that was his guy, if him and Magnum TA were are hot, well, all of a sudden, Dusty was in a tag team with them. So on, on these big shows like Greensboro and Atlanta, you know, Dusty was always well. He was going to be close to the top anyway, but close, Dusty made sure that he was in he was in that main event because they was paying him big money, and uh, and Dusty was a draw. He was exciting. So, but I, I've met a few of them that says that, uh, especially Ricky. I, I asked him one time what was he making, and I you know I had in my head <clears throat> what I thought he should be making. <clears throat> And yeah, he was making good money, very good money, but not what I thought he should have been making. I mean, I kept my mouth shut. I didn't say nothing to him, but but what I did ask him, I said, how much, and I knew how much money he had turned over. And I think we talked about this on the on the the regular show last Friday. We talked about gimmicks. You know, in Memphis, you could you could have your gimmick money. But in Charlotte, I guess you couldn't. But I guess they were killing it on rock and roll gimmicks, on the T-shirts and all, and and the pictures. And I asked him how much he got of that. He said, nothing. I said, you had to get something. He said, well, now I don't know if he was bush, bull crapping me or whatever, but he said they didn't get, or if what they got wasn't anywhere close to what they, if even a percentage they would have come up with. So that's one way they can actually pay your salary and actually come out ahead by paying you. Probably the, the gimmicks were, were paying uh, Robert and Ricky's salary. So it's hard to believe, but yeah, it, it can happen. It really can. 